guys, welcome back to another video in the channel. Today we continue with our Halloween special week. And uh, it's been a long day, I'm actually recording this at, um, later in the day after I recorded the Yorona video with Marvelous Designer. So hopefully you guys like that one. I haven't read your comments because the video hasn't aired yet, but uh, hopefully you guys liked it. Um, and uh, we just hit, at the time of this recording, we hit 30 thousand subscribers so thank you thank you guys very much for all of the support i know that i'm usually the, the face here in the channel but there's a whole team behind the scenes working to making sure you guys get the best possible content uh in our premium courses here in youtube uh of course uh doing the sponsors for the contest and the giveaways that we're doing each month so there's a whole lot of people that we're about i think like seven or eight people working on the on the next two team so from all of them and from me thank you very much for this 30,000 subscribers and let's keep it going let's see if we can get to uh, i guess our next goal is 40,000, right uh so yeah today guys we are going to continue with a blender and the uh, blender is a super um, I think the word, the, the work I like to use is like a noble, um, software. It's, it's really nice. It's free. It has a really powerful tools for modeling and sculpting and rendering and stuff like that. So you can do a lot of stuff with Blender. If you are a beginner level student and you want to learn a software, Blender is a great, great way to start. We've had discussions in the past about which one is better. Uh, you guys know that I'm a software agnostic, so I don't really care about the software. I care about the results. Here in the studio, for instance, even though we're a small studio, we are using Blender. All of the 3D artists are using Blender right now because it's cheaper, <laughs> of course. And uh, and we've been producing very cool looking stuff. So um, it's uh, there's other questions. There's videos on the channel talking about the differences between Maya and Blender. If you want to check those out, check those out. Today, we're going to focus on Blender. But we, before we jump into the uh, into today's exercise, which, as you guys have already seen on the thumbnail, it's a tombstone. Um, we are going to be, or I just want to remind you that if you want to learn about Blender or any of the other softwares that we've been showing in this a week, you can learn that through Skillshare. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. There we go. So um, today we're going to be doing a tombstone, as you saw in the in the video. And uh, I got an image from uh, the internet. Where is the, I think it was like Shutterstock or something. I'm just going to press a Shift A to add something, and I'm going to add an image, and it's going to be a reference image. We're going to navigate to our desktop, and right here I have my tombstone. Super super low res, as you can see right here, but it should be more than enough. I'm going to press a G and Z to bring it up. To, so that it's right here on the on the top part of our of our element, and I picked this one because it's a relatively simple one to model. It's made out of different components. So when we're working with three D, we need to to try to dissect whatever we're doing into different components, so that it becomes a little bit easier to work. So I would say the components here are the circle, the cross, and then the like the pedestal, right, that we have right here. And we're gonna start with the pedestal. These are super, super basic tools that we're gonna be using in the first half of the video. And then in the second half, we're gonna go into a little bit more advanced stuff with sculpting so we can get a really nice high poly uh, element from here. So I'm gonna start Shift A and I'm gonna add a cube here to my uh, scene. Whoa, go back to one. I usually like to keep my images like lower in opacity so that I can see the grid. So I'm gonna go to the image options over here and I'm gonna turn on opacity and bring this down to something like a 0.5. There we go. I'm gonna hit S to scale this down. And then I'm going to hit S and C to scale it on Z. There we go. A G and C to push it up. There we go. And from here, we're going to start extruding the rest of the element. So extrude is probably one of the most useful um, elements. I'm going to press G and Y to push this up. It's one of the most useful elements inside of the 3D world. We use it all, all the time. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a vertical split to have two images. On one side, on this one, I'm going to have the top view, and on this one, we're going to have the perspective. This is super, super helpful, guys. Like, being able to divide this, we can do that in Maya as well. So, no <laughs> no software wars on the comments, but uh, there was a software that was I was using recently that I thought would be great to have this on. Who was it? I think it was Unreal. Was it Unreal? No, Unreal can do it as well. I don't remember what software I was using that, uh, and I, I thought, hey, it would be great if they implemented this, because it's very, very useful. So anyway, I'm going to go uh, with tab key into the component mode and I'm going to press number three so that we go into face components. I'm going to grab the top face and I'm going to press I 
to insert this. Roughly about there, I would say. And then I'm going to press E and I'm going to extrude it. And as you can see, we're extruding this like the next part of the element. And that's why we have the two views so that I can see how much I need to extrude it on the perspective view as long as we match the um, the one on the side on the right. Right. So something like that. And then we do another inset. Oh, right around there, I would say. And this one I'm not going to extrude because as you can see on the console, there's a little bit of a, of a ramp. So I'm just going to press G and C to push it up and create that little ramp. There we go. Now from here, E again to extrude up. And you can see there's a couple of steps right here. So we're going to start one, a little bit of an inset, E, push it up, and then I. Let's press um, I again. There we go. Something like that. And then E again. It's like to there. And then I again. And then G and Z to push it up. And as you can see, we've like successfully created our effect, our, our element, our, our little um, pillar here. I'm going to insert again to go for the next section. We're going to E again to extrude all the way to about there. And then it's very pixelated, but I can see that it goes in again, up, and then we get a little ramp. So we're going to insert again and then E to about there and then E again. And if, if we forget to insert, no problem. We can just hit S and scale this in and we'll get the exact same thing. And then finally, we scale all the way up to about there. And you can see a final like, little bump right there, which we're also going to scale. And there we go. We've successfully created the profile for our like base, the pillar of our uh, tombstone. So um, we are going to eventually jump into sculpting. I'm going to sculpt this into sort of like a stylized way. And that there's two methods when, when working with sculpting, right? We can add subdivisions and make sure that we have like clear, clean support edges and all that stuff. Or we can uh, do um, like Dynamesh. Well, in this case, it's not called Dynamesh. It's called Dynotopo, which is pretty much the same thing. So um, I'm going to show you the, this, the first thing that I mentioned, the subdivision method. And I'm going to show it because for beginner students, if we don't want to do a retopology and we just want to keep our low poly and our high poly in the same tool, I think it's a it's a nice way, um, although maybe later on I'll change my mind and we'll do the Dynotopo. If you want to do subdivision, one of the things that you need to know about um, subdivision surfaces is that whenever we apply a subdivision surface, as you are about to see right here, everything is going to become really, really smooth, which is fine if we're doing like some sort of like organic looking stuff. But in this case, I would like things to be kept in a better way. So one way to hold all of the edges is by adding something called support edges. And this comes from a Cadmod Clark, which are two guys that uh, um, invented this uh, system of subdivision. And the way it works is as long as you have two or more edges close together, things are going to be sharper, right? So I could go again to my uh, component mode, add like a loop tool. And if I were to add like, let's say a cut right there, let's add like two, right? And if I divide, as you're going to see, that corner right there is going to be uh, sharper than the rest of the elements. But we don't want just that corner. We want pretty much all of the object to be like that. So I'm going to select everything with A and I'm going to hit a bevel. And I'm going to bevel everything. Since it's a very simple geometry, we can get away with this. I'm going to bevel it. I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive like this. And then on the bevel options, I'm going to give it two segments. Now, I don't want to round the segments. I would like to keep them flat. So here on the on the options, we can also change uh, this thing, the, the shape to zero. Sorry, to 0 0.1, 0 0.5. 0.5, it's like 0.25, I guess. There we go, 0.25. And that's going to keep things uh, sharper. Now, I give it two divisions to make sure that the corners here, instead of having triangles, we have uh, squares. And now, if we were to uh, select this thing right here, you're going to see that we get a way, way closer shape to what we're uh, going for. Now, the, one of the other problems about uh, subdivisions is that subdivisions will always calculate the distance between three points, right? So it takes into consideration, it's a very basic concept, but I'm going to show you it anyway. Uh, we have three points, right? And what Cadmo Clark does, it finds the average of these three points and it creates the curvature. So if we have a long distance between the points, for instance, that point right there and this point right here, all of this section is going to be like stretched out quite a bit. So I'm going to go to my loop cut and I'm going to add a loop cut and we're going to add several segments here. Uh, let's add six segments. That seems about right. Same thing here. We're going to add one, two, three. Let's do five segments there or four. We usually want to keep things as um, like uniform as possible. So let's do two there. As you can see, most of the horizontal lines 
uh, have the same distance. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side right here. So we're going to do one, two. That seems about right. Three. Let's do three. And let's do the same here. So one, two, three. And there we go. So as you can see, we don't have the most uniform topology, but it's quite uniform. So it's like a very nice uh, organized matrix or topology, as we call it. And now when we uh, subdivide, as you're about to see, things are going to hold a little bit better. Now, if you want certain areas to hold even better, what you need to do is we need to insert something called... Um, Oh, there you go. We have a couple of bad faces right there. You can see them right there, all of this line. Uh, that's bad. So let's, I'll, I'll show you, of course, how to fix this. I'm going to go into uh, face mode. Let's select all of those. All of those. I'm going to press uh, X and I'm going to say delete faces. And then I'm going to select this guy right here. X, delete faces. And now we need to bridge these guys together, right? So let me go to W mode. Let's go edge. I'm going to select that guy and that guy. And actually, let me go back to faces. I'm also going to delete this ones. There we go. So now from, from uh, this edge to this edge, we're going to say edge and uh, bridge edge loops. There we go. So that will fix it. However, we lost the bevels that we had. So I'm going to go back to edges, select that one and that one. And we're going to bevel. Give it a little bit of a bevel there. Oh, it's having a little bit of, of an issue. Uh, when when bevel when the bevel tool is not behaving as you might expect, it could be to a couple of different reasons. But the most common one is that um, we did not apply the transforms, which is kind of like freezing it. So I'm going to press Shift A, or sorry, uh, Control A, and apply all transforms. It's kind of like deleting history inside of Maya. So now that we have this, again, let's get rid of this for just a second. We should be able to grab this guy and this guy. And there we go. As you can see, the bevel behaves as expected. Very common issue uh, with the bevel tool. There we go. So now again, when we divide, as you can see, things are going to hold uh, their shape nicely. You can right click on the object and shade smooth. That's also going to be quite uh, useful to make sure we get a very nice soft effect. And that's it. We have the, the basic uh, shape. Um, and as you can see, yes, it's a lot of polygons. I, I know some of you might be like, well, this is not as optimized because we have a lot of polygons. Yes. Nowadays, polygons are not a problem. They're not the bottleneck. The bottleneck is textures. So even this is perfectly fine. If we need to simplify, we can simplify later. Let's jump into the next stage or the next part. And uh, we have this like big circle, like like a stone circle. As you can see, it's pretty like jaggedy, pretty fragmented. So I'm going to press a shift A. I'm going to add a uh, cylinder. Uh, I can count like one, two, three, four, five. Oh my God. Yeah. It's like 10 sizes. So when a cylinder or any shape is born, you can change the amount of sides. In this case, we're going to change this to 10 sides. But once you uh, lose that, it's gone. Um, give me one second, guys. Because <laughs> I'm getting my allergy attacks. There we go. Um, this is one of the things that I don't like about Blender. We don't have a history. So once you do an action, the action is gone and you can't really go back and uh, and modify it. It's not usually the end of the day. Uh, like there's, there's, of course, ways to to work around that, but it is quite handy to have a history. So I'm going to make this thing uh, smaller like this. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the faces, number three, and I'm going to delete the caps. So I'm just going to hit X and delete faces. Now on this uh, version right here, very important that we're on wireframe so that we select both uh, vertices up uh, on the forefront and on the back. If anyone knows about uh, Blender, because um, uh, I, I, I haven't found this, uh, this shortcut. So if anyone knows where to find it, I'll be really grateful. I actually haven't Googled it. But there should be a one uh, to, to remove the back face masking. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments. Um, so here I'm just going to select uh, vertex mode, grab this, guys. And with G, I'm just going to move this around so that we match the high and low points of our element. As you can see, it's not symmetrical, which is fine. And it actually gives us a really nice, uh, like, um, stylized look. There we go. Now I'm going to grab this whole thing. I'm going to go again into face mode, hit A to select everything, hit E to extrude. And if we try to extrude, it's going to do a very weird thing. So we actually need to, again, select everything. But if we go to the extrude options right here, we're going to extrude uh, along normals. And when we push it, as you can see, we're going to be able to extrude this thing nice, nicely like this. This is going to give us our, our thickness, something like that. That's perfect. Let's scale. Oh, let's grab the object and scale it down. And I'm Again, going to go into vertex mode and we're just going to like move some of this vertex around to get like the, the proper width and the proper effect. There we go. Cool. 
Now this guy, S and then uh, Y to scale it on the Y axis and get the proper uh, thickness. As you can see, it's it's not as thick as the pillar, but I would expect it to be quite thick, especially again for sort of like stylized uh, elements. It can be a little bit thinner or thicker. And uh, we also are going to bevel it. But as you can see, we do have an extra like edge loop there that I don't like. And it actually created something weird. See that thing right there? That's like a it's like an end gun. That's that's weird. Uh, I'm going to go into edge mode. Select that edge right there. It's really weird. I'm going to delete the edge. I'm going to dissolve the edge. Oh, weird. Oh, you know what happened here? Yeah, I know what happened. Let's go to face mode. Let's select this face right here and delete the faces. Yeah, <laughs> we got like a like a double sided thing. Let's go delete this faces as, as well. As you can see, see all of those elements. That's really bad. So let's delete all of these faces. That shouldn't have happened. That's really weird. I'm going to do another option here. I'm going to select the, the outer uh, faces like this. I'm going to press uh, J. No, not J. Uh, Control J. Is it Control J? Control P. Shift P. Shift J. Hey, why is it not? I want to want to separate p selection there we go so now this one right here we no longer need and we should only have this one right here i'm gonna add a subdivision on the surface and yeah okay that that tells me that things are working as uh, as intended i'm gonna go now into phase mode again and i'm gonna go extrude along normals there we go we should only get one like uh group of faces i'm actually gonna extrude inwards because we already have the outer one so right about there there we go now uh we're gonna select all of the edges and what i wanted to do was to bevel of course so i'm gonna bevel all of the edges i'm gonna give them two divisions this one's i am gonna keep uh, like this so that when we um subdivision surface as you can see right there we're gonna get a really nice clean effect now since we're gonna be going into sculpting uh in just a second i do need to add a couple of uh, divisions here so let's add three there two there three there one there or there to there I'm, I'm adding depending on on how big or small i need the the squares to be so that they match or like fall close to what we want we're gonna add two on each side right here and two on this side there we go i know that's a lot of squares but it's gonna make the sculpting easier trust me um so yeah that's it we got that so now let's go for the inner cross as you can see it's made out of like a couple of components uh here we need to decide whether we want to keep things as one single piece or multiple pieces. I think for simplicity sake, it's gonna be better if we keep it as a single piece or a separate pieces. So I'm gonna go mesh cylinder. I'm gonna bring the cylinder up right about there. R and X, so that it rotates in X. S to scale it and make it smaller. That's gonna be the uh, the inner section right there. I think we can make it bigger like what we have right there. That's, that's perfectly fine. The only thing we need to be careful about is the caps right here because we, these are angons. So I'm going to go into face mode. Oh. Let's go face mode. Oh. W. There we go. So like this two guys right here. Inset. To create a little bit of a border. Seems to be like a... There was some sort of uh, double extrude there or something. There we go. Uh, you can press the uh, slash key on your uh, numeric path to isolate the object and only work on this guy. Very very handy tool we're gonna press i to inset there we go and uh, now we are gonna go into edge mode and we're gonna select the uh, edges right here i not sure if i want the upper edges i don't think i want it. i kind of wanted to keep it like round and then if we need to like make it a little bit nicer we can uh, sculpt that and we're gonna do bevel and two edges there we go slash again and there we go now for the final piece which is the sort of like cross uh thingy uh we're gonna use a cube so i'm gonna go shift a we're gonna start with a cube we're gonna move the cube to the upper side right there perfect we're gonna scale it and as you can see we have like a big shape and then it kind of like extrudes inwards to create like a like the attachment point to the the actual like center so we're gonna keep it like that I'm going to go a little bit smaller. I'm going to go into component mode, grab the vertices. Let's go uh, to rock selection. There we go. A G and C to bring them down. 
And then same deal. On this side, I'm going to grab this face. I'm going to inset it. I'm going to uh, G and C to move it down. So we know that eventually this thing is going to enter or go right there. But it has this sort of like very nice curvature to it. So I'm going to go into my loop cuts. And I'm going to add three loop, loop cuts. And then I'm going to go into uh, number two mode. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to scale it. I'm going to select Alt and uh, click to, to select the, an edge loop. And we're going to scale it. Alt and click. We're going to scale this as well. And that's going to create the very nice curvature that we're seeing right there. This seems like a good uh, element. It does have like a little cap up here. So I'm going to go to three. Uh, we're going to extrude this up and scale this in a little. Bit. There we go. Now we're also going to bevel this. Um, so I'm just going to grab in the whole edges. Just hit A to grab everything. Bevel. And we're going to get this two divisions. There we go. Now, if we subdivide this guy, something interesting is going to happen. We subdivision surface. You're going to see that this part right here, which has a nice curvature, is now like segmented. And that's because, of course, we have more uh, polygons, right? Well, one thing we can do is we can go to some of this and say, hey, you know what? Uh, I changed my mind. I don't want to bevel this guys right here. So I'm going to remove this uh, bevels. I'm going to press X and dissolve edges. Very important that you dissolve the edges so that uh, vertices are deleted as well. Now, since we don't have any uh, subdivisions there, when we apply the subdivision surface, as you can see, it's going to be really, really small. Nice, right? Let's go to this guy. And now I want to duplicate this time or this guy four times, but I want to duplicate it based on the uh, location of the center of this pivot, right? And to do that, the best thing or the, one of the best things that we can do is move the pivot point of this guy, which right now is up here, to the center of this guy. And here's where you can use a couple of shortcuts inside of Blender to achieve that. So first, I'm going to press Shift S, which is the uh, cursor and selection thing, uh, like a quick menu. And I'm going to say cursor, cursor to select it. OK, and as you can see, our 3D cursor is now going to jump to the center of that cylinder. Then I'm going to select uh, this guy right here and I'm going to say object set origin origin to 3D cursor. And that's going to move its pivot point to the to the location of the 3D cursor. And since we place that on the center of the cylinder, it's now going to be there. So if I were to control D and duplicate or uh, it's uh, sorry, shift D to duplicate and rotate, as you can see, I'm going to be able to rotate this and it's going to rotate from that point because that's where the pivot point is. Again, shift D, rotate, and just control to snap this, shift uh, D and rotate and it's going to be right there. Um, of course, the, the lower section we're not really going to see because it's going to be going inside of our pillar, but it looks interesting. We can grab all of them and we can press Control J to join them together into a single um, geometry and right click and shade smooth to get this very nice effect. And there we go. Finally, uh, before we jump onto the sculpting section, we still have like 10 minutes, which is, I think, more than enough. Um, what I need to do is I need to give this guy a good subdivision here because, as you can see, there's a lot of space in between these elements. So I'm going to go to my loop cut. One, oh, let's do one, two, three. Three is fine. One, one, two, three. One, one, two, three. We really don't need to do it on the one on the inside because we're not going to see it. And then we're going to do two, 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 and two. And there we go. And that's it. Now, this one, since we're also going to be subdividing, I'm thinking about where now we want more subdivisions. I think we do, especially here. I'm going to add a couple more, something like that. That should be good. Now, what am I going to do here? Uh, as you can see, this little like blue thing, it tells us that there's a subdiv or a like, modifier. So I'm going to delete all of the sub uh, like modifiers and I'm going to combine everything into a single object. Even though we modeled each specific part a separate piece, we can at the end like just combine everything and it's perfectly fine because combining them will not merge them together. They're still going to be their own little islands. So it's easy to select, it's easy to work with, and it keeps things a little bit simpler. So I'm just going to press Control J. And now, as you can see, this whole thing, it's a single element. And since we properly prepared the topology for all of them, so let's grab this guy, Control J. Since we properly prepared the topology for everything, if we add a modifier and we add the subdivision surface modifier, everything's going to be subdivided in the way that we are expecting. Now, even though we've been talking about the subdivision modifier all of this uh, video, we're not going to be using that. We're going to be using a different one, which is called the uh, multi resolution. The multi resolution is a really cool one. It's pretty much like using the divide function instead of Seaburn. It allows us to have levels of uh, subdivision and we can decide which one we want to see on the viewport, which one we want to see on the sculpting and which one we want to see on the on the rendering. 
So I'm going to see subdivide once. I'm going to do it twice, three times, and four times. We're going to go really, really high on the subdivisions. Uh, if we were to check right now, let's, by the way, let's just get rid of this one. Right click, uh, join areas, just like that. Uh, if we were to go up here to the statistics, we're going to see that we have two million triangles. That's a lot. Two million triangles. Uh, quite a bit of triangles right here on the viewport. In my case, uh, well, my computer can handle it, but sometimes it uh, gets a little bit difficult. So what we can do here is we can bring this down and say, hey, when we're working here, we only want to see like the first subdivision level. And on the render, we are going to see the four or the two million triangles. OK, now, as you can see, the sculpting says, hey, you are also going to have quite a bit of triangles on the sculpting phase. How can we access that? Well, of course, by going up here to the sculpting tab. Now that we're in the sculpting tab, we're going to be able to work a little bit better. I'm going to be using my uh, tablet now. And um, one of the disadvantages of uh, of uh, going from one software to, the, to another is that you forget about the shortcuts and you kind of like need to get your brain into it. So uh, there's a very cool brush and it's pretty much the only brush that I'm going to show you tonight. Um, it's going to be the flat brush or the fill brush. I think it's the fill brush. No, not the fill brush. Flatten no scrape scrape brush there we go so the scrape brush is going to allow me as you can see right here to go into the different sections of our element and, and kind of like bevel specific areas it's going to give it a very like world of warcraft stylized looks very very typical to use this technique by the way uh i'm not reinventing the wheel you can find tons of tutorials about this i'm gonna press a g uh, or sorry not g uh, scrape uh, f to change my brush size i'm just gonna start beveling certain areas to, to give this tombstone a little bit more life. And as you can see, we're able to get a really nice uh, details and effect thanks to the way we um, prepared our topology before jumping into this stuff. If we didn't have enough resolution, it would be pretty much impossible to do this sort of, uh, this sort of effect because we would need to have like proper topology and uh, and the, and the well, the object will be missing it, right? So I'm, I'm trying to be as uh, random as possible. I don't want it to be too obvious, uh, like certain corners. Like you don't want to add damage, like this sort of damage to every single thing. And again, remember, you guys are going to vote to know which one we're going to be texturing. I'm not going to have time to texture this one today. Uh, but if you want me to texture this or the pumpkin or the coffin or the dress so far, that's the four options that we have. Um, and actually, it's going to be all of the options that we have, because tomorrow we're going to be working or not tomorrow. Well, Tomorrow for you when watching this video, but two days from now for me when we do the speed tree one, uh, speed tree is actually already going to have its own sort of um, texture and stuff. So again, trying to vary the position and the and the placing of of this damage. I don't want it to be super obvious and everywhere. There we go. Not bad, not bad. Cool. So as you can see, we got a, a very interesting like chiseled effect. And uh, this is thanks to the amount of polygons that we were able to get. If we didn't have this uh, resolutions and this uh, divisions, uh, it, it's not possible to do. That's one of the like secrets of 3D. The more polygons you have, the nicer and the cooler things can look. Later on, uh, if you want to learn more about this, remember we got the Skillshare uh, option down there. Uh, if you go into game development, we can't bring this uh, like elements as easily into the engines or into like a, like a game. So we need to do a process called retopology and we need to project the details that we've created so that they uh, match what we have. There we go. Now uh, we still have a little bit of time, so I'm going to add a little bit more detail. I'm going to go with my clay uh, strips, which is pretty much like my clay buildup. And you guys know that I love my clay buildup. And I'm going to press Alt to start kind of like, sorry, not Alt, Control. Start like carving out little like holes and stuff. That like, I'm gonna press F to make a little bit of like damage in certain areas of my, my element. Look at that. It's kind of like, like erosion, right? Do I have Photoshop open? Photoshop has a weird, I've mentioned this before, it has a weird like behavior with um, with the Wacom, with Huion tablets for some reason. I love my tablet. I've been enjoying it quite a bit. I got the, this 
<laughs> it's actually thanks to you that I got it, my friends. I I, I don't think I've ever I confess that, but uh, thanks to all of your support in the in the in the courses and everything, that was one of my like Christmas gifts uh, for myself last year. So thank you, thank you very much. Thanks to you guys, I was able to get myself a very cool display tablet, and now I'm using it to teach you more stuff. So it's a win-win situation, I think. Um, so yeah, there we go. Again, just like a couple of like scratches and stuff. And uh, now I'm going to start adding like just random texture to the stone again so that we can create something that looks interesting, like a damaged thing. I'm going to go with a draw sharp. I'm going to increase the size of my brush a little bit um, uh, more. And I'm going to add just like some scratches here. And then actually, I'm going to make the brush smaller. Just like, I don't know, I imagine like some creatures or something attacking this thing at night. There we go. Let's add, uh, it's very common for these things to have like an inscription or something. Let's add just like a, like random words. Now, as you can see here, uh, we don't have enough resolution to like really write down. So I'm just gonna like scribble, scribble things to indicate that there will be like a name or some sort of like inscription there. Because once you see it from afar, that's, that's pretty much all you're gonna see. There's also like a cross uh, symbol like uh, here. We're not going to be able to do that. As you can see, the topology there is not helping. That would be something that we might um, later on. What's the word? Uh, just um, later on, we could uh, add it in texture or something. Now I'm going to go with uh, my draw brush. Actually, let's go back to, to the scrape brush. Not the scrape, sorry. The fill. Is it the fill? I'm just going to do flatten here. It's kind of got out of control. You can use the uh, shift to smooth things out as well. I think that's good. I think that looks good. Not bad, right? I think this is good. So now, uh, since we still have a, have a couple of times, I'm going to show you a quick render setup here inside of Blender. Super fast. I'm going to go back to layout. Let's save real quick before anything bad happens. I'm just going to call this um, Tombstone. There we go. Uh, so we don't need the image anymore, so we can just delete it. We do need an infinite plane. I love using those. So I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh. We're going to add a plane. Scale this up. Go to number one, G. Position it right underneath the tombstone. There we go. Uh, let's scale this on X so it's wider. I'm going to go to component mode. Grab the edge right here. Oh. Grab the edge and extrude it uh, up. There we go. And then grab the edge. Bevel it. Control B. The shortcut for bevel. There we go. Uh, shade smooth, and that's it. We have our um, our backdrop. I'm gonna grab this camera. I'm just gonna jump into it, and I'm gonna press N to go into navigation, go into view, and I'm gonna change this to camera to view. This is the way I like to to frame my stuff. Let's frame our tombstone right there. Perfect. And uh, now we can press N again and jump out of the camera because I know that when we render, we're gonna render from that uh, take that we had right there. And uh, let's get our HDRI. Um, for those of you that uh, are wondering, where can I get myself some HDRIs? Because in the last couple of videos, I showed them, but um, but I already had them. Polyhaven. Polyhaven is the way. Uh, HDRIs, free HDRIs, very cool looking ones. Uh, let's go for something, I don't know, like a little bit spooky, I think. Can we do that? Like uh, this one right here. I know this is not as spooky, but we have like a, like a nice uh, heart shadow. Uh, actually, I, I usually don't like having hard shadows with the HDRIs because it, it becomes really difficult to to work with those later. Um, some of you might be like, oh, why not go to the night ones? Ah, they're not that good. <laughs> some of them are, are a little bit tricky to work. But for instance, this one right here. Oh, that's the one that I normally use, right? The Christmas studio. Let's use another one. Th this one. This one's it's fine. Uh, sometimes it, it's just it's difficult to work with uh, dark scenes. So um, I'm going to go to this one right here. And we're gonna go to the environment settings and we're gonna select color and we're gonna use an environment texture instead of uh, the color. Normally we have this very basic, um, like a uh, uh, gray color. And we're gonna open, of course, let's go to downloads and we got this one, there we go. So now uh, if we jump to the, this one right here, which is the render option, we're gonna see the render. And this is what we get. As you can see, we have a light. I don't want this light right now. And we have the HDRI right now. This is Eevee. Eevee is one of the render options that we have inside of, of uh, Blender. It's not bad. I've seen amazing things done with Eevee, but it's not a ray tracing, or I don't know if it's a ray tracing. It's just not as uh, accurate as uh, using a traditional render. So I'm going to change this to Cycles. And uh, Cycles, if you have a GPU compatible card, you can actually use a GPU compute 
and it's going to be uh, doing this a little bit faster. You can change that uh, by going into preferences and then on their here on their cycles render devices CUDA course if you're using nvidia optics or when ap i believe is if you are using amd um but yeah i'm using uh my nvidia card here and uh, this is what we get uh we can even get like a denoiser i don't need that right now i'm gonna grab this guy one thing i am gonna add is a different like material so i'm gonna go to the material options i'm gonna add a new material and the material is gonna be like a, like a dark gray material there we go something like that works nicely uh, we might need to increase the, the roughness just a little bit. It's supposed to be like stone. Eventually, the ideal thing would be to texture this, right? And, and give it like some uh, like um, uh, metal edge wear and stuff like that. But for now, this is going to work just fine. Now, remember, even though we are rendering, we're not seeing the full render because this is the viewport. So until we finally render the whole thing, or unless we go back to the modifier and change the uh, level viewport uh, all the way up, we're not going to see all of the detail that we sculpted. That's fine. We'll see it in just a second. So before we render, I do want to change things around a little bit. Um, this is one of the reasons I don't love uh, HDRIs, because as you can see, we have a very strong light right there, and um, we might get a shadow that we don't like. So um, that's one of the things I don't like about this thing. It's not as easy to rotate it. You have to do a whole lot of like texturing things. Uh, so we're going to keep it like this. Yeah, we'll just keep it like this. One thing I want to add is I just want to add a rim light uh, to, to like separate this thing from the background. So to do that, I am going to press shift A. I'm going to add a light and it's going to be a spotlight. Let me get out of here so we can see it. I'm going to press a G, move it like about there. I can use this little like yellow thing to point it to, to where I want, which is this place right there. And then we can start playing around on the light options with the power. Let's try like 100 enough let's try a thousand there we go that's a little bit better let's try 1500 that's it let's go and look at the camera and as you can see that's going to give us an an interesting look right there let's move the camera a little bit to get space for some of our stuff right there i'm gonna rotate this uh on the y axis sorry on the z axis there we go so the shadow like falls a little bit nicer right there and the one thing I, I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the options here. I'm going to bring the strength down a little bit. So like 0.5. That's going to like tone it down the intensity of the HDRI. You can even go to like 0.1, for instance. It's going to be really, really, uh, really creepy looking. That one's actually a little bit better. Let's do ooh, 0.02. That looks really nice. It's too low, though. 0 0.08. Let's try. There we go. That's a little bit better. But now we definitely need another light here on the front to, to frame our element. So let's go for like, a, what about like a like a, a fire pit or something. So I'm going to press shift A, um, light, and let's do a point light. I'm going to move this thing up here, right about there. I'm going to change the options. I'm going to change the color, of course, to like a, like a warm color. Let's try like a really intense. That, that one's a little bit too intense. Let's try like a hundred. I just want this to be like off camera, like a little bit off camera. There we go. Let's try like 200. There we go. Not bad, right? And since we already have one, we can definitely just hit Shift D. Let's move it aside. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's rotate on the C axis. Shift D. Rotate on C axis as well. Scale it a little bit more. G. Odin C. This is one of the cool things about doing an asset that once you have one, it's a very, very easy to just do a couple more like this. And you create an, an interesting looking composition. There we go. So now, finally, the, the last thing we need to do is we need to set up our render. So over here, I'm going to tell it, hey, you know what? Just render for, I don't know, like 20 seconds. I don't think we're going to need more than 20 seconds to, to render a, a clean image. And I definitely want to keep the noiser active. Uh, we're using GPU, and if we go to this option right here, this is the size of the image. As you can see, it's 1920 by 1080. I'm going to go back to viewport mode or to uh, shaded mode because it's going to take a little bit of load from the graphics card so we can see it better. Actually, as you can see, this one's right here. Uh, we did not change this, so we're actually seeing all of the million polygons here on the screen. That's why it was uh, like uh, struggling a little bit. But now we just hit render and... Uh, what? No, not render image, sorry. Render and render image. Uh, we wait a little bit for the whole thing to be uh, loaded. And once the whole thing is loaded, it's going to start rendering. 
It's going to take 20 seconds to render as much as it can. It's going to clean it up as much as it can. And once it's finished, uh, after 20 seconds, oh my God, after 20 seconds, it's going to stop. And you're going to see a little bit of magic happening here with the denoiser, where the denoiser is just going to come in. It's going to try to calculate what the best color is for each specific section. And it's just going to soften it up. And we're going to get rid of all of this noise. There we go. So the noise is gone. And we have this very cool looking image. And that's it. Again, a little bit over 30 minutes, about 35 minutes, but we covered sculpting, modeling, and, and uh, light, so maybe you guys will forgive me for that. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. We're finished with day four of our Halloween special, and we're ready to jump into day five uh, tomorrow with a speed tree. Also, again, let me know in the comments. Whatever you tell me in the comments, that's what I'm going to be doing for the weekend. We're going to be uh, texturing, and we're going to be rendering whatever you guys decide. We're probably not going to take... Uh, 30 minutes in rendering. I don't know. Maybe we will, depending if we do post-production. Uh, but we're going to the same object that you pick from these four objects. This is the final object to pick from. Um, either the pumpkin, the coffin, the dress, or this uh, tombstone. We're going to um, do some texturing. And then we're going to do rendering Saturday and Sunday to finish our Halloween special. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you to all of your 30,000 subscribers. Hope you have been learning throughout this uh, whole year, a little bit more than the year that we've been doing this. Uh, and let's go for more. I'm not tired yet, so we're going to keep on going. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.